fresh fish dinner. It's a West Coast favorite. We've got salmon, halibut, cod, trout, and on and on and on. Locals like to drop a line in the water and devour their catch of the day. Today we're cooking something a bit different, sablefish, also known as butterfish or black cod, but oddly it's not part of the cod family at all. This deep sea fish is highly prized for its intensely rich and buttery flavor and for its surprisingly delicate texture. It will open your eyes to a whole new flavor experience. Our catch of the day menu is wild line cod Pacific sablefish, yam and garlic mash with fried broccoli. I'm Garrett Shack, and today that's what we're cooking on the coast. for a deep sea treat. Call it what you like, butterfish, black cod, sablefish. On today's menu, I call it wild, line caught Pacific sablefish, yam and garlic mash with fried broccoli. Let's get started. Okay, we gotta get a few things rolling here. You see I've got a gorgeous yam. I love yams, one of my favorite sort of starches to work with. Commonly mistaken for the sweet potato because of its orange color and its flavor, this is actually known as a yam. This is actually a yam. We just want to peel off the skin quickly for this. You don't, you can eat the skin, so if you wanted to, you could just wash it and these roast up really nicely. My kids love them, they'll eat yams all day. Here we go, just a little olive oil into the oven, but today we're doing a mash. So we want, they mash up really nicely because you can put them into like a food processor or something like that, and they don't get all gummy like a potato would. So they're great for mashing. Okay, we're just gonna cut these up. We don't have to worry about the size too much. You can see I've already done a couple there. And we're gonna fire them into a pot of cold water and then crank that water on. There we go. And then a little bit of garlic in there. Now the garlic, we wanna take the little, uh, little edge off because the garlic's gonna stay in. We're gonna take the uh, root side off. The garlic's actually gonna stay in this dish and we're gonna mash it all up together with the yams. That's gonna, that's gonna help release all the flavor into our liquid and into our mash as we cook it. So in it goes, a little salt. And then we're gonna fire that up to a nice high heat and really get it cooking. Perfect. Next up, our fried broccoli. So we're doing a bunch of mise en place ahead of time here. So I got the fried broccoli in the sink over there. It's just been had a bunch of water dumped over it, soaking. Get some of the, get some of the stuff that might be in there off. Now not only are we cleaning our broccoli here at this stage, but we're getting it ready for the next step. We want it to be a little bit moist so we can get our rice flour to actually stick to it. Okay, do up this next one here. There we go. Making some nice little florets. Peel it apart. So I can feel quite a bit of water still left on these. That's perfect, that's what we want. Kind of good sizes. We're gonna be deep frying these or like sort of shallow frying them actually, not deep frying. So what we want is fairly thin pieces, kind of small so that uh, it cooks quickly. And then we're gonna pour rice flour over it. Now this is a great dish because we're doing, it could be gluten free, right? Rice flour, no problems with gluten there. We're gonna put a fair bit, we're gonna toss it around. Tiny little bit of salt at the beginning stages here. That's gonna help release some moistures out of that broccoli as well. Toss it around. There we go. Nicely coated, but not like a really thick batter. We're not battering this guy, we're just sort of coating it. Okay, now we can set it off to the side. Give my little station a wipe here. Then I'm gonna go to the fridge and I'm going to grab the piece de resistance, the beautiful piece of this dish, the actual sable fish, okay? Let's see how it is. There we have it. Now who doesn't keep a cutting board full of fish in their fridge, right? I mean, but come on, we gotta, we gotta do some stuff. We're on TV here, right? Now sable fish is probably one of my most favorite fish uh, in the ocean. I mean, salmon's delicious, halibut's great, rockfish, we're, we've got so many here on this coast. But sablefish, as far as I'm concerned, is the king of, the, king of all fish. Has a beautiful fl fl flavor, texture, nice big uh, light flakes, and it's kind of forgiving when you're cooking at home. That's what I like about it. What we have to do, though, is pull out, there's a run of bones that runs down the middle here. So when we're doing it in the restaurant, we take these bones out so you get a nice boneless piece of fish. And with a nice sharp knife, I'm just gonna start following down, I can actually feel the bones on my blade. So when I'm coming down, I'm kind of keeping that little bumpiness of the bones right close to the blade here. I'm gonna go all the way down, right to the skin, and then cut through. 
Now you notice we haven't taken that skin off. That's because the sablefish skin has really tiny scales and has tons of flavor. There's like a layer of fat because this is such a deep fish, a deep sea fish, that there's a nice layer of fat in there that adds flavor. Okay, there we go. Perfect. So that's all bones. You can save that for a fish stock later. I'll cook it off and give it to the cat. Uh, who knows? Um, and now we want to cut this into a few portions. So some nice pieces there. But look at that. Look at that gorgeous skin. It's delicious and a beautiful white flesh. Set it down on our on our towel there. Now this is going to play two two. This is going to play two parts here. The towel helps to absorb some moisture so that when we get it onto the pan, we get a really nice crispiness and also just draw some of that moisture so our pan doesn't cool down when we put it in there. All right, we've got some oil in a nice hot pan here. When we're cooking this fish, we like with most fish, we want a nice hot pan, then we're gonna lower it down and finish it off in the oven. Little seasoning on our fish, salt, and everybody's favorite, cracked pepper. There we go. And then into our pan. Okay, very careful here when you're putting stuff into a pan. We want to lay it down away from us so that if any splash, it doesn't splash back on us. It's a common mistake in the kitchen. You'll see chefs with burn marks all over their arms, usually because they're getting in a hurry and putting it down the wrong way. Okay, one little trick here too. While we get this going, kind of just want to give it a little press. Helps sort of flatten the skin down on the, on the frying pan. And that'll make that nice and crispy. Okay, we'll give it a few seconds there. We'll turn the heat off and then we'll fire it in the oven. We'll be back later in the show to pull together wild line cop Pacific sable fish, yam and garlic mash, and fried broccoli. But first, following the break, we're going to get out and about. You'll want to stick around for that. outdoors at the beautiful Arbutus RV with Rose. Rose Little, how are you? I'm great, thanks, Garrett. Very nice to see you today. Yeah, nice to see you too. So, not your traditional camping dessert. We're going a little bit more high-end here. We've got a uh, peaches and cream cobbler that we're going to be doing. Wow, at the campground, that's amazing. Right, no kidding around. Mm -hmm. Well, we got be we got all these beautiful RVs. Yeah. We gotta make some beautiful few food to go with it, right? Absolutely. So the first thing we wanna get started with is we've got some lovely um, jarred peaches here. Mm -hmm. so get them in season, right, whenever you can. Mm -hmm. and we're gonna add, mm, I don't know, what do you think? Like a about a tablespoon of, uh, of flour here. Mm -hmm. I'll just get you to do the mixing if that works. Okay. You can tell we're really cooking outdoors here, hey? When the wind comes up and things start blowing away. Mm -hmm. So we're just gonna mix those around a little bit. And then we've got some thyme here. So this is gonna add a little uniqueness to the uh, to the thing. Thyme and peaches go super well together. Go That's you. interesting. I would never have thought to use thyme on Well, thyme's got a certain kind of sweetness problem. to it, you know? Mm -hmm. So it kind of just enhances and has a little fun to it. And then it'll keep your, uh, keep your guests wondering. They'll be going, oh, what is this unique flavor in there? So thyme, flour, and then we want some brown sugar. Mm -hmm. So probably a good, that's like a teaspoon and a half. We'll go for two full teaspoons there. Just to keep the kids a little bit hyper. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly it. Because they need that when they're camping, yeah. right? All right, we got some butter. Now the butter is going to act, this is going to act like a thickener here with the flour, right? Mm -hmm. So whenever you want to thicken something up, a little butter and flour always works, like a good gravy, right? Mm -hmm. There we are. Now, this is the piece. I mean, you can do it without it. Because it's you and I here today, Rose, we may as well uh, throw a little bourbon in there, hey? Okay, well, right. it evaporates while cooking all the way well, anyway. Exactly, so you, you, say, you say when. I'll do a cap full here first, and then we'll see how we go. Ready? There we are. That looks perfect. Probably enough. Save the rest for later. And talk about the flavors that bourbon brings out. Well, bourbon, bourbon and peaches are again another natural mm -hmm. one. I think it has. I think it's just because they're both from the south that, uh, mm -hmm. that it really works out. Um, now, any good baking has a touch of salt in it. Hey, that again, like the flavor enhancer for us. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. So those are all mixed really nicely. And what I want you to do is just dump that bowl right into this cast iron pan here. Okay. Scrape it all out if you can. Get as much as you can out of there. And in the meantime, I'm gonna start adding some butter to these oats that I have over here. We lightly oiled that cast iron pan, but it is still cold, so there's no okay. worries there, okay? Yeah. So I got some butter in with the oats, and then we've got some of Cooking on the Coast's famous granola here. We're just gonna sprinkle that in. And this is some homemade granola. Oops, yeah, that's mm -hmm. homemade. Well, we're camping, it's okay, right? All right. We'll leave that for the raccoons later. 
<laughs> uh, yeah, so homemade granola. So it's got, you know, some pumpkin seeds in there. We use some graham crumbs, lots of goodness. And then maple syrup is our binder, right? So okay. now, now we've got maple syrup, bourbon, mm -hmm. peaches. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I can think of better combinations, really. Oh, it sounds good. But you could do this with any fruit, right? Oh, ah, yeah, good point. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, we use whatever's in season. Um, what's an example of one you? Yeah, well, like you've ever blackberries. Made and, uh, yeah. So many blackberries, Blackberries right? are abundant on the... Uh, on the island and certainly in our campgrounds we always go picking blackberries with the kids so yeah totally i mean uh, fall camping is a thing we like to do mm -hmm. around here right especially because we have these gorgeous rvs we can uh, we can do that right we got yeah. heaters and all that stuff so great fall dessert here and that means peaches and pears apples okay all that's on there now the butter's kind of evenly dis distributed and then we're going to spread the granola around now this is going to go right on our grill, okay? okay. We're not, we, don't, we don't have an oven here today. We're just firing it right on the grill. And that's going to cook from underneath. And again, we're going to use this sort of convection of the, of the barbecue when we close the lid. Perfect. In it goes, nice and hot. Sort of as hot as, uh, as hot as you can get in the grill, and we'll turn it down a little bit later. And here's the finished product right here. Wow. Look at that. Now how, long, how much time did that take to uh, well, cook on the grill? Well, this is a fairly small pan. Um, but you know, we're looking at like, I don't know, 30 to 35 minutes to mm -hmm. get it nice and golden brown like mm -hmm. that and to sort of uh, get everything, all the juices inside all going right. and things start to bubble. What do you say we uh, just top this off with a little bit of, so this is where the cream comes in, the peaches and cream. So we just got some heavy cream. Okay. You could do some whipped cream or something like that, but uh, if you don't have a whisk handy or a big bowl, big enough bowl, or, or you don't, mm -hmm. yeah, or your KitchenAid. <laughs> Although we might have one in an RV here, wouldn't we? Exactly, yeah, sometimes you have power. For <laughs> yeah, sure. exactly. So we just pour that over. And there's our creaminess. And then if you were gonna set this down on your table and you really wanted to impress your guests, you can grab some of that uh, leftover time. If you had a little extra time on your hands, mm -hmm. you can make it look pretty just by sticking some time Looks in good. it. Looks good. There you go. You Shut definitely up. need a larger pot for my family. <laughs> yeah, fair enough, I know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this, this uh, is pretty rich, but I, I agree, it may not uh, be quite enough. Especially if there's a family around here at our, oh, our Beauty's wow. RV, hey, they're gonna be... Uh, I can smell all the wonderful smells of the peaches and... Mmm, absolutely. Careful, mm. it might be hot. Mmm. Mmm, it is hot. Delicious. Right? Mmm. Mm. So good. Lovely. Rose, I don't think we should tell anybody else about this. You and I just stack on this one, right? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> can we just have this first? I'm sure glad the pot's not bigger now. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks very much for having <laughs> Thank us here you. today, Rose. <laughs> to our kitchen we're working on our wild line caught pacific sable fish yam and garlic mash with fried broccoli things are really cooking around here we've got the sable fish in the oven it's gonna it just needs about seven to ten minutes depending on the thickness of your fish and look at this steam Woo, it's like a steam bath for my yams those are ready to go we've poked them with a knife and we can see that they're coming apart right there they're not sticking to my knife anymore so that means those are set so we got to strain them off in the sink over here we've got a strainer ready for us we're just getting rid of the moisture. We're gonna keep that garlic. Definitely want that all in there. There we go. Okay, back into the pot. Thank you very much. And over to the stove. Now, we're gonna turn that, turn that burner off, but at this point, we wanna mash them up while they're still hot, okay? So we got our masher, crush them down. See how easily they, they sort of mash up? They turn into this really nice puree. The garlic's gotten nice and soft too, so that's great. It's just gonna sort of melt away into that. Perfect. Now we want a little bit of butter in there. Maybe, let's say, three pieces. That looks good. Some more salt. And then some pepper. There we are. Awesome. Okay. Give it a couple more mashes, and we can always come back and stir it all up a little bit in a few more seconds here. Okay, but we're going to leave it on the stove. That's going to help keep it nice and warm. There we go. Next up, our broccoli. Everybody remembers what we were doing there. You can see it sort of had a chance, the rice flour sort of had a chance to kind of make it all kind of sticky in here. So we want to get over to our frying pan or our sort of makeshift deep fryer, see if we're hot. There we go, bubbling right away. That's kind of what we want. 
Uh, kind of, that's exactly what we want. In they go. We'll put a few in, being very careful here. Anytime you're working with hot fat at home, make sure you're being very careful. In they go. Now this rice flour is just gonna help make it nice and crispy. That's the idea here. And adds a slightly unique flavor. Anytime you deep fry something, it changes the flavor of stuff. Okay, just trying to pick out the smaller pieces in the interest of television, right? If you're doing this at home, fry them all. Just keep a close eye on it. Okay, that'll be it for now. Now we wanna let those fry just for a little bit. Meantime, let's go rescue our sable fish from the oven here. I hear you, I hear you. Okay. Oh, look at that. Golden brown. Starting to flake apart. You can actually sort of start to see a few of those flakes. That looks fantastic. The skin's nice and crispy. Excellent, exactly what we're looking for. Just set that down on the stove just for a few minutes. And we're gonna check on our broccoli and see how we're doing there. Lovely, lovely. Starting to get a little bit crunchy there, which is perfect. Now this isn't gonna be like a potato chip crunchy. It's just gonna add that extra different type of texture as opposed to just steaming your broccoli. So let's get a paper towel here. We can get those out. Look at that. Very nice. Almost has like a uh, sort of popcorn type smell to it. I love it. There we go. Awesome, onto the paper towel. And like, I, like I've said many times before, I'm sure those of you that are fans of the show have heard me say it, but anything that's coming out of the deep fryer, we wanna get salt on it right away. There we are. Set that in there and then season with the salt. Okay, not too much, just enough. There we are. You can hear the crispiness, hey? You can hear them as I shake right there. Perfect, now let's pull our plate on here. Let's start going for our restaurant quality plating. Set that aside, look for a spoon. I'm gonna throw the yams, yam and garlic mash. Kind of right, right there in the plate. Sure, that looks great. Now you can have some fun with it. You can do some smears. You can kind of push it around the plate, but I'm gonna leave it nice and tight in one spot right there. And we're gonna get our sable fish. And we're gonna put one right on top here. Actually, I'm gonna use a fish slicer here because this thing, if the fish is nice and flaky, it could fall right apart. Like you see it flaking apart there? It looks great, awesome. Okay, I'm gonna set that right on top. Oh man, that looks fun. Almost snack for me. Mmm. Man, I tell you, love this fish. It's so good. I'm gonna take the other piece out, just set it over with the broccoli, because we're gonna show you how to make a really quick pan sauce here. Now we just need to get rid of some of that moisture. So we're gonna just dump it into a sink down here, or into a little bin. And now we're gonna turn our heat back up and make what's called a, a a butter, that's gonna make, we're gonna make a butter sauce essentially. We're just gonna mount what's left in the pan here, a few of these drippings and stuff. We're gonna mount that with butter, but first we want a little flavoring. We want some shallot in there. We're gonna cut these, uh, you know, fairly thin. So we want them to cook quickly. This is gonna become our lovely sauce for the, for the plate here. In goes the shallots. Give that a quick toss. So the moisture that came out of the sable fish is starting to evaporate away. And we're gonna pick up all that sort of little bits and pieces that were left in the pan. But we wanna let it deglaze. We wanna deglaze it with a little white wine. This is gonna add some flavor. There we go. And now the mounting part. Cold butter cut into cubes, fairly sort of small pieces. And you just put a couple pieces in at a time. You can actually break them up a little bit. And now at this stage, you wanna sort of keep your pan moving. This is creating, again, creating like this little emulsion that sort of gets things moving. See how it's coming together? It's starting to look like a sauce. Looks great, love it. Okay, now we can turn off our heat. There we are. I'm gonna get a little bit of lemon juice in there because I want that acidity to cut through all the fat. Just a few drops, give it a taste. I use salted butter, so we probably don't need to add any extra salt here. I tend to be a little heavy handed on the salt sometimes, so. Mmm, absolutely delicious. Lovely color, lovely taste. Let's get a few of these broccoli onto the plate. Set them nicely here, nice and crispy. Bit of crunch there, love it. Okay, and now our sauce in over top. Ready, this is the fun part, so everybody pay attention here. A little bit over top. Don't cover up that whole skin. We made, we took great effort to get it nice and crispy. 
So we want to make sure that it stays that way. And if you pour the sauce right over all of it, you lose that crispiness. All right, there we have it. Wild, line caught Pacific sable fish with yam and garlic mash and crispy broccoli. Now for my favorite part of the show. Let's pair this great dish with a great beer. I've got Chris here from the Axe Barrel Brewing Company. How are you doing, Chris? Good, how are you? Thanks for coming on the show, pal. Thank you. Uh, so, we got some sable fish, we got yams, you know, we got all this stuff going on. What did you decide to pair with it today? I decided to pair our IPA. Okay. India Pale Ale. Nice, yeah. Um, yep, yeah, we're doing uh, uh, maybe not so traditional IPA for, right. for the Pacific Northwest. Uh, we've uh, added Australian hops. Oh, interesting. Right? So yeah, where, yeah. you know, the typical Cascade and Chinook and those types of hops add more citrus. Yeah. Um, Australian hops tend to add a little bit more tropical fruit. Oh, cool. So right. should we, we should expect like some like pineapple, passion fruit type flavors out of that? Yep, definitely some mango as oh, well. Oh, nice. Yeah, oh, that's, a, that's yeah. probably one of the more prominent flavors. Very cool. Yeah. Nice, nice. I thought it would pair really well with the sable fish. Um, just the, the, the fat, the buttery, butteriness. The fattiness. Yeah. And then the richness of, of the, the yam. Of course. Well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very nice. Very nice. Perfect. Mm, smells great. That's for sure. Yeah. So how many, how many beers uh, do you guys brew over there at Axenbrook? Right now we're uh, brewing five. We've got four regular beers and we have a seasonal. Okay. Um, so mm. yeah, things are going Wow. Well, sometimes like those IPAs, yeah, sometimes IPAs, they just knock your socks off, right? Like you're Absolutely. just like, oh my god, my mouth is full of a flower yeah. right now. This actually is nice and light. Yeah. It has that hoppiness to it, yeah. but it's uh, but it's mellow. Let's let's see how it works with uh, with this sailfish and cuts through the fattiness. Here. Absolutely. All right, let's dig into this. Let me break that apart a little bit. Yeah, uh, the approach on this IPA was to definitely make it a drinkable IPA. Mm. Not so bitter, nice and uh, just easy drinking. More dry than than bitter. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Perfect. That makes sense. Mm, well, I think I think you nailed it here, mm -hmm. because that sablefish does have that fattiness to it, right? Mm -hmm. That hoppiness in there, although it's subtle, really really cleans the palate a little bit, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. mm. That's excellent. Very good. Yeah. I love sablefish. Oh, me too. It's one of the best fish Killer. ever. Yeah, yeah. So new kid on the block, and uh, mm -hmm. and I think you're doing a really great job out there. I mean, you guys. Thank uh, you. It's our t it's our team. Yeah. We got a enough. really good team. So. Good, good. Well, I look forward to trying out the Axe and Barrel uh, sooner than later. Hopefully. Yeah, come, hey. come check us out. Yeah, good stuff, Chris. Thanks for being here, mate. Cheers. Thank you. Check out our website where you'll find more information on today's show and maybe a few surprises. I'm Gary Schaff. Thanks for watching and don't forget to savor the flavor. It's really great.